I think it's safe to say the Minnesota Wild officially have a penalty problem. We'll look into that as well as what went wrong for the Wild in their 4-1 to loss to the Kraken on today's episode of Locked on Wild. You're Locked on Wild. Your daily podcast on the Minnesota Wild. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to another episode of Locked On Wild, your daily Minnesota Wild podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Wild your first listen every day. And just as a reminder, we are free and available wherever you listen to podcasts. On today's episode of Locked On Wild, we recap the 4-1 to loss to the Seattle Kraken, how the Minnesota Wild wasted Cam Talbot's best game of the year, and what to make of another listless performance by some of the top players for the Minnesota Wild. We saw some line changes tonight that didn't pan out, and so we will look at all of that as we regroup and gear up for the Avalanche on Saturday. My name is Seth Topal, host of Locked on Wild, veteran Minnesota sports content producer with over a decade of experience covering every sport in Minnesota and uh, here with you on Locked on Wild. Thanks for tuning in to finish off your week uh, here on this Friday edition of the show. Initially was going to come out of the gate firing after uh, an annoying loss to the Seattle Kraken, but decided to take a little while to um, just kind of let everything sink in because, you know, we, I especially have a tendency to, after games like that, really have a hard time digesting what we saw. And so took a little bit of time to just kind of relax, threw some music on, try to collect my thoughts because probably better served to try to analyze what we saw as opposed to just, um, coming out of the gate, guns blazing, trying to, uh, you know, put everybody on blast for their performance here tonight. Make no mistake, not a huge fan of uh, what we saw from the Minnesota Wild, really in any facet uh, in this game against the Kraken. Yes, they were shorthanded uh, coming into the game, but um, at the end of the day, you know, the, uh, the Wild started – and we're just in great shape. Uh, got the first goal of the game and through the first probably 10 minutes of the first period. Looked like they were going to be able to come away with a nifty win um, on the season. Um, to uh, get them their uh, sixth win on the season. But had the Marcus Foligno goal that was waved off. Now, I'm not going to lie. I didn't agree with the call because uh, it seemed pretty evident to me that Felino was uh, was trying to stop his foot, not uh, not a kicking motion, um, as it was called on the ice. I, I I don't agree with that call at all, and so that uh, cost the Wild a goal. And from that point to the end of the period, Seattle dominated uh, in terms of uh, possessing the puck, in terms of the shot department uh, that carried on through the entirety of the second period. The Wild are lucky that they were only down by one after the way they played in the second period. Uh, there was a stretch, and I, I tried to legitimately count. Uh, there was a stretch of about 20 minutes of real game time in which I think the Wild managed four shots and maybe had total from midway through the first period to the end of the second period. Maybe had two minutes total of possession in the Seattle zone. and that is not something that uh, that you can do. Uh, we've talked about it throughout the course of the season this year, is that uh, as long as the likes of Dmitry Kulikov and John Merrill uh, were playing on the third line and were, uh, were just kind of blending in, doing their job, uh, that, that things would be fine. But if we got to any situations where we said, man, how great would it be to have Carson Soucy and Ian Cole um, on that third line just kind of helping uh, keep the peace on the back end? I'm going to do it right now. How great would it have been 
to have Ian Cole and Carson Soucy on that third line tonight, missing Alex Goligoski and Kulikov tonight. Uh, that third line D pairing was not great at all. And that was part of the reason that the Wild just could not sustain any sort of zone presence uh, against the Kraken here tonight. Came out with some fights in the third period uh, at the start, but ultimately it just wasn't enough as uh, Seattle just continued to do uh, what they did. Seattle played uh, what is going to become Kraken hockey uh, here tonight. They just, they, they would not leave the wild uh, any opportunities with the puck. They, uh, they just, they kept it in the wild zone for long stretches of time. And, um, you know, the, the Wilds, ultimately at the end of the night, they were not the better team here. The effort was much more like what we saw against Nashville, um, with the exception of the start and uh, a couple of minutes in the third period. It was very much like that Nashville game. And so it's disappointing for this team. And I tweeted it out amongst many other things um, at Seth Topes. Um, th this is just too talented of a team to have such a long stretch in which they cannot clear the puck, cannot possess any sort of zone presence. This is too talented of a team to have that long of a stretch in which they cannot do anything offensively with the puck. And if not for Cam Talbot's best game of the year by far, um, and going back to last year, one of his better games as a member of the Minnesota Wild, if not for his effort tonight, this could be a five to one, six to one, seven to one type game because there was really nobody else that uh, that brought it here tonight. And yes, that stems to uh, that stems to being shorthanded. But, you know, at the end of the day, there are some guys in this team that are just going to have to step up and uh, and start making some plays. And it goes all the way to the top which we will talk about uh, a little bit more in depth here coming up. But um, just right off the top, some thoughts uh, as to the Wilds' 4-1 uh, to loss to the Kraken. When we come back, we will take a look at what is going on with Kirill Kaprizov and Kevin Fiala and uh, quiet games for both of them here tonight. We'll talk about that and more coming up here on Locked on Wild. This fall, Built Bar wants to help you celebrate freedom of choice. Did you know Bilt Bar has an amazing assortment of delicious flavors? They include coconut, cherry barcia, raspberry, mint brownie, double chocolate, salted caramel, strawberry, orange, cookies and cream, and German chocolate. If you're looking for a great place to start, my personal favorite is raspberry. But if you're not sure about that and want to give a couple of other opportunities uh, to different flavors, grab the mixed box. You'll get two each of those nine flavors. Not only are Bilt Bars amazing tasting but they are very healthy as well each built bar contains 17 to 18 grams of protein ranges in calories from 130 to 180 contains only four to five grams of sugar and only four to five grams of net carbs so they're amazing tasting they are amazingly healthy what's not to like about a built bar so head to built.com and use the promo code locked 15 and you'll get 15 percent off of your order Again, use the promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at built.com. Continuing today's episode of Locked on Wild. Again, thank you for making Locked on Wild your first listen every day. Continuing to dive into what we saw in the Wild's 4-1 to loss to the Seattle Kraken. And uh, as we talked about, you know, being shorthanded, the lines were just completely um, in disarray here uh, in tonight's game. And I, in particular, amongst many other people, was excited at the possibility of seeing Kirill Kaprizov and Kevin Fiala on the same line with the hope that that would lead to one or the other uh, kind of getting sparked uh, here tonight and, uh, and maybe seeing a performance from each or from one at least that would lead to them getting back on track to, uh, to start off the season. Uh, we had the gorgeous feed from Kaprizov behind the net through his legs to Ryan Hartman for the opening goal of the game. After that, we had nothing. And 
We saw Dean Evison juggle the lines again because you know what we threw out there tonight just was not getting it done. So we went back to Felino, Greenway, Erickson Eck. We went to at one point Sturm, Goudreau, Kaprizov. We went to at one point uh, Kaprizov, Rask, and I believe Goudreau was the other player on the ice at that point. So Dean Evison just started mixing and matching, trying to find that one line combo that would uh, that would give the spark and would get this team uh, back into this game. And sometimes you just don't find it uh, during the course of a given game. If your uh, starting combos aren't working and you uh, you try to juggle them a little bit, tonight was just one of those nights that nothing worked. And uh, Dean Evison with some interesting comments after the game in regards to uh, what we saw uh, from both Kaprizov and Fiala. So here is the full quote from Dean Evison. Uh, this coming from uh, Michael Russo's Twitter account. And uh, here's what Dean has to say. Well, we want them to contribute the same way we want everybody to contribute, right? For the better of the team. Hopefully they're not putting individual goals or points ahead of what we're trying to do as a group because we've had success as a group without some people scoring because everybody is pulling in the right direction. So when you get a little sideways with that, then things don't go right with the end result. And, you know, I would expect nothing less from uh, from Evison in that uh, you just, you have two top level guys that you expect to be 30 goal scorers on the season. And so far combined, they have one goal. Now, I'm not trying to discount the fact that teams are trying to take them out of the equation, but at the same time, we're not seeing that level of play from Kirill Kaprizov last year uh, that we saw um, where he just, he owned the ice when he was on the ice. We're not seeing that same level from him so far this year. We are seeing some of the things that we saw from Kevin Fiala last year. Uh, the, the passes that are just a little too forced or, uh, or some of the other things that, that are leading to um, him not being as successful as he was last year. And I don't know what percentage of that is the players on the ice with them, what percentage of that is them, what percentage of that is what the opponents are doing to them. They're all factors, but at the end of the day, as I said in the open of the show, this team is too talented to have gone through this type of a stretch. They've now got 21 goals in seven games, not, uh, not a pace that they should be on. They should be above that with the offensive talent that they have. And we saw it again tonight, just too many dumb penalties by this team. Yes, the penalty kill was perfect tonight, which was great to see. At the end of the day, the problem that has bitten this team so far is that they just seem to draw that one additional penalty that is the backbreaker and leads to a power play goal that puts the game out of reach. That sort of thing has to be corrected, and it comes down to effort. A lot of these penalties come down to effort. The hooking penalties in which guys get beat down the ice and try to overcompensate to slow down the player that stole the puck from them. Those kinds of things are not mistakes that are made unless you are, you know, giving that full effort. And so at this point in the season, five and two, we've seen a close to complete game from this team but that's really been it we've seen flashes through the other six games tonight we saw the first 10 minutes of the game and that was pretty much it against vancouver we saw i would say 45 to 50 minutes of good hockey and before that we saw entire first periods that just were super uneven and uh, and were not the kind of hockey that you can expect to play to win games. And so somebody on this team is just going to have to step up and uh, and start scoring or taking things on themselves. 
whether it be Kaprizov or Fiala, one of those two guys is going to have to step up and just take it on themselves to uh, to put the puck in the net and to start leading this team um, towards some of those offensive outputs that we expect because it is not happening right now. And outside of the fourth line, which was broken up tonight, um, I was excited for uh, Nico Sturm to get an opportunity on the third line. Uh, Brandon Duhame got bumped all the way up to the first line at one point. Everything was just completely out of whack. And so one of the changes you got to go right back to is getting that fourth line back together because that that group works. Uh, beyond that, I really don't know because I, I'd like to see patience be be played. Um, the team definitely missed Zuccarello uh, in tonight's game. He's out with COVID. I think the team missed Rem Pitlick as well. I'd like to see that Kaprizov, Zuccarello, and, uh, and Eric Sinek line given some more time to figure it out. But at the end of the day, at some point, you just have to go to what's going to win you games. And so we'll, uh, we'll just have to see what sort of adjustments Dean makes ahead of the uh, Colorado Avalanche, which we'll talk about next as the Wild will be at Colorado on Saturday trying to improve to 6-2 and two to finish off the month of October. So we'll talk about that to finish off today's show, what the Wild need to do to beat the Avalanche. That's coming up next here on Locked on Wild. BetOnline.ag is back, and they are better than ever. They offer a new web interface for the start of the basketball season, plus more props, odds, and lines than ever before. BetOnline.ag remains your number one spot for all the basketball and football action this season. So head to their new updated desktop or mobile website to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Make sure to use the promo code LOCKEDON to receive that welcome bonus. From basketball, football, baseball's World Series, the NHL, boxing, and UFC right to your favorite Vegas casino games, don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. BetOnline.ag is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all of your favorite sports. BetOnline.ag, where the game starts. Continuing today's episode of Locked on Wild. Again, thank you for making Locked on Wild your first listen every day. Just as a reminder, we are free and available wherever you listen to podcasts. The Colorado Avalanche coming up on Saturday, and uh, that'll be an 8 o'clock game for the Minnesota Wilds. The Avalanche come into this game fifth in the Central Division, and to say that it has been an uneven start for the Avalanche so far this season would be an understatement. Colorado is 3-4 uh, and four on the season. They have uh, a 20 goals for, 26 goals allowed in those uh, seven games. And so uh, obviously has not been the same sort of crisp start to the season that uh, we've seen from this team in years past. Nathan McKinnon did miss some time due to uh, COVID-19, but he is back and uh, has seven points through five games so far. The biggest thing that has led to the um, avalanche starting the season where they have is the goaltending as uh, Darcy Kemper and Jonas Johansson uh, are combined, as mentioned, three and four. Uh, the goals law against average, not uh, terrible uh, at 3.29, but um, in 898 save percentage. Uh, and Darcy Kemper, three and three with a 3.22 goals against average and an 893 save percentage. He has been uh, very much up and down so far in his Avalanche tenure. Um, he has losses to the Washington Capitals and the St. Louis Blues, where he gave up five goals and four goals. Also has a three to one loss to the Vegas Golden Knights. His wins four to three, four to three in a shootout, and four to two. So teams have been able to uh, put pucks in the net against this avalanche team, but I think the biggest thing that we're seeing for Colorado is they are sorely missing some of that depth that has um, 
really helped them in the past. And now not having that uh, in that bottom six, that is where uh, teams are able to, um, that's where teams are able to take advantage uh, against this, uh, this avalanche team so far. And so um, obviously with uh, Zuccarello and Pitlick still in the COVID-19 protocol, um, they will miss the, uh, the game on Saturday. And so you're going to get a situation where that in normal situations would be a spot for the Wilds bottom six to take advantage and, uh, and try to, you know, take advantage of that mismatch. Well, now that may not be as much of an option for this team because you're going to be moving guys like Nico Sturm, Brandon Duhame around maybe to that third line. Uh, and so that fourth line will probably not be intact again uh, going into Saturday's game. So this is going to be a tough one for the Minnesota Wild, not trying to, you know, sow the seeds of doubt and despair, but uh, the Avalanche, one of the better teams, expected to be one of the better teams in the Central Division. They still boast the likes of uh, McKinnon uh, and some of his uh, other line mates, Miko Rantanen. Um, you've got Landeskog, Burakovsky, you've got Kale McCarr on the back end, um, Kadri. All of those guys have been very, very good for a long time. And uh, so this is going to be a, um, an absolute fight for this wild team in this game against the Avalanche. But as we've seen in the past, as we saw already this season, the wild do have a good tendency to bounce back after a, uh, a sluggish game. And that is definitely what they had um, in the, uh, the loss of the Kraken. So it would not surprise me if we see the Wilds give a better effort in uh, Saturday's game against the Avalanche. Uh, they're going to have to. Otherwise, we will end the month of October with a 5-3 and three record when 6-2 uh, and two is still attainable. Um, it's, it's going to come down to trying to get a little better production from that uh, third-line D pairing. Maybe we get uh, Goligoski back so that everybody else can slot into their normal positions. But uh, if not, then it is going to put all the pressure in the world on Brodeen, Dumba, Spurgeon, and Merrill. Because if those guys can't contain the likes of uh, Landeskog, McKinnon, and the rest, then this, this game could get very ugly very quickly. So... Hopefully the Wilds can uh, can put a little better effort out on the ice on Saturday to uh, to end the month of October with a six and two record. And um, mostly, I'm just hoping that we see somebody um, up near the top of the Wild roster uh, step up and um, and play a little better here. Um, and I I don't know. I've seen suggestion on Twitter that Krill Kaprizov is is nursing some sort of an injury. It's possible. Um, but I think it's just a situation of asking more of your better players because of, uh, of what they're being paid to do. And I just, I, I don't think, I don't think we can say that, uh, that Kaprizov has lived up to, uh, what he is being billed, uh, as of yet. Now it is early and, uh, there's entirely the rest of the season for, uh, for that statement to become false. but. As of right now, like we we need him to to step up and do what he did last year. We need Kevin Fiala to play at his level, um, and uh, and have that lead to uh, some goals. Now the Wild did also have some uh, point blank opportunities that I think could have swayed this game that uh, just didn't go in. Jewel Erickson Eck had two on the same power play that um, just slid through the crease. One hit the post. Um, and uh, the other just did not materialize into a goal. Maybe if you get those, this game has a completely different look to it. But all in all, you know, it's frustrating to uh, to have this team be laid out the way that they are and to still have these kinds of games. Now, it happens throughout the NHL. I mean, look at, uh, look at the Avalanche being at three and four. Um, obviously, I'm sure they're not happy with the way that things have gone so far for them. So all about just surviving some of those valleys of the uh, the season. And hopefully the Wilds can do that, put a little better effort out there on the ice, and uh, come away with a win on Saturday. 
that's going to wrap it up for today's episode of Locked on Wilds. Uh, keep an ear out for next week as we've got a couple of prominent Minnesota Wild prospects that will be joining uh, midweek uh, for an episode of Locked on Wild. So uh, keep an eye out for that for next week. And uh, we'll have plenty of other Wild-related news and notes for you uh, throughout uh, the end of October into November next week as well. Uh, now that you're done with your first listen, I encourage you to go check out if you uh, are looking for more info on the uh, the Chicago Blackhawks uh, handling of the sexual assault that took place in 2010. Uh, Jack Bushman over at uh, Locked On Blackhawks did a great um, episode breaking everything all down. So if you want more info on that or are curious as to what exactly is going on in that situation, Head over to Locked On Blackhawks for your second listen here today. Make sure you're following along with Locked On Wild on our uh, social media channels, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, as we just rolled out our first set of report cards uh, grading the Minnesota Wild players based on their performance over the last week. Uh, we'll be doing those every week with uh, Wyatt Guerin uh, handling those, so uh, make sure to check those out on our socials. Make sure to check out our YouTube channel. We've got uh, new content coming out on almost a daily basis, uh, just trying to keep up with the wild throughout the course of this season. And uh, on top of that, we've got new episodes for you every Monday through Friday. You can find all of this as uh, part of the Locked on Wild content umbrella, which is also part of the Locked on Podcast Network.